everyone! Welcome to my channel Growing Up Blue where I post weekly vlogs about my Australian cattle dog puppies Racket and Bindi and take you along on our training journey and puppy adventures. Today I will be showing you how we groom our cattle dog puppies. So today I will be showing you a little video of how we groom our cattle dog puppies Racket and Bindi. I'll start off by brushing them both and then we will be giving Bindi her very first bath. I'll be sure to include tips along the way because if your healers are anything like my healers, you know that when the brush comes out, they either want to eat it or attack it. So I'll be showing you some tips on how to avoid that. And I also will be including links in the description down below for all of the items that I talk about in this video. Okay, so let's get to grooming. So the ultimate secret weapon for grooming both baths and brushing is the lick mat or the lick pad, which are these right here. Now, I hadn't really heard of these before and I wasn't too familiar with them, but about a month ago, I received a comment on my video and basically they were saying that lick pads or lick mats are really great for helping your puppies to calm down and then also giving them some mental stimulation. So of course, after reading the comment, I went online and I ordered two of them immediately. And I just have to say, these lick pads are amazing. You cannot go wrong by picking one of these up. Basically, these lick pads are just a rubber mat that have a bunch of grooves on them and you just spread either peanut butter or yogurt or pumpkin or even wet dog food like I've done and your dog just licks at the yummy food and it occupies their time. I've used both peanut butter and wet dog food and both of those have taken Raka and Bindi a pretty long time to work through on these slick pads. They're easy to clean too. Of course, Raka and Bindi do most of the cleaning with their tongues, but when they're done eating off of these lick pads, you just can rinse them off in the sink and because they're rubber, I think there's probably still a little bit of water in there. I don't know if you can see the reflection, but anyways, the food just rinses off and they're ready to go again. I've also heard of people putting on peanut butter or your dog's favorite spreadable treat on here and then freezing them. And of course it takes even longer for them to work through and lick all the food off. Because of how long it takes them to work through a lick mat and because how much they love peanut butter, when I am going to brush them, I will put peanut butter on the mat and I just use something like this which is an organic peanut butter from Target. And as you can see, it is unsweetened and it has no salt added. And the ingredients on the back literally say dry roasted peanuts. So that's all that is in this peanut butter and it makes it healthy for them. You don't wanna add any extra sugars or anything that dogs shouldn't have to their diet. So I just take the peanut butter and I spread it onto a lick pad. Now, normally Rocket and Bindi would both be attacking the brush, like I said, and either trying to eat it or play with it, I don't know. But having a lick pad, that is the ultimate brushing or really any kind of grooming hack. They are amazing and they are such a lifesaver when you really need your dog to stand or sit still so you can just get your job done with and get them brushed. Healers do have a double coat, so when brushing, I use a Furminator. And it's basically just an undercoat de-shedding tool and I think that it works really well. You never wanna cut a cattle dog's hair because it will ruin their double coat and ruin how it functions to protect them and regulate their body temperature. But of course, brushing is a great way Way that you can groom them and also help to reduce some of the shedding. When shopping for a Furminator, they do come in different sizes and you just have to choose what size your dog is and then also if they are a long-haired dog or a short-haired dog. So for Rocket and Bindi, who are cattle dogs, right, of course I got the medium size, which I think is good for 25 to 50 pounds. Now, Rocket might be a little bit bigger than that, but I'm sticking with this one for now. And then, of course, also I chose the short hair variant. So on the Furminator, this part here is metal, and it is sharp, so you do have to be careful when using it on your dog. While we're up close here, I did want to show you that it does have this fur ejector here, which you press down, and it might be hard to see, but it puts a plate of metal down too and that helps push out the fur or you can just grab it with your fingers sometimes I find that easier but this ejector also doubles as a protector when it locks into place so that's a pretty cool feature like I said since this part is metal you do want to read the instructions before using a furminator on your dog and make sure that it's right for them of course I'm no professional so that's why I always say read the instructions ask your vet 
but I will say that when using this you do want to make sure that you're not pressing too hard or going over the same spot too many times because you just don't want to scrape or irritate their skin. You also only want to use the Furminator probably once a week to again avoid any skin irritation but overall this tool is great at doing its job at de-shedding and removing excess hair. Since Bindi is getting a bath today and before all baths it's good to brush your dog to remove any excess hair or get out any dirt before getting all of that in the bathtub and then it also loosens up the hair a bit and gets out any perhaps matting and that way you can really massage the shampoo into their double coat. Since healers have a double coat they don't really require baths that often but people do recommend that you bathe them when they start to smell or when they're covered in mud or really you know every four to six months I'd say. Now Bindi has never had a bath before and she's almost four months old and don't tell her, but she is starting to smell, so I think that it's time to give her a bath and get her all cleaned up. Today I am going to be using this hypoallergenic aloe and oatmeal shampoo. And of course, since the double coat can be hard to get into, I'm going to be using this rubber curry brush, which has these little rubber pegs right here. And it can get wet, so I'll just use it to massage into the, her double coat with the shampoo and make sure that I get it deep in there. And then the important part is also I'll be using this to massage when I'm pouring water to get all the shampoo out. You don't want to leave any shampoo residue in their double coat because again, that can cause skin irritation. Since it was Bindi's very first bath and I wasn't entirely sure how she would react, I grabbed a ton of towels and I filled the bottom of the bathtub with just a few inches of warm water that she could stand in. I set the trusty lick mat on the side of the bathtub and then got to work. Again, I didn't want to traumatize her too much with her first bath and I wanted one of her first water experiences to be positive, so I mostly just washed her body and her legs and I tried to stay away from her face and her ears and kind of the back of her neck as well. Now, of course, I will eventually work my way up a little bit further on her head, you know, still avoiding the ears and eyes and everything that you should avoid. But I feel like with healers, the key to everything and crate training, potty training, I guess giving a bath is a little bit at a time. So that's kind of the direction that I'm taking with bathing too. I kept her collar on so I could hold her better, but out of nervousness, she ended up just crawling half on top of me and half trying to get out of the bathtub. I knew that I was going to get wet, but I did not expect to get this wet. Overall, I think that bath time went pretty great and she smells like a clean little puppy again. I love the smell of puppy shampoo or just wet puppies so much. It's just so cozy, I guess, for me to smell. But anyways, I'm hoping that as we take more baths and by the time summer rolls around, that she'll be used to the water more and possibly ready to go swimming in the pool and hopefully jump in the pool and hopefully get Rocket to like the water too because he's definitely much more of a big baby when it comes to baths and the water. That's all for today. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below. While you're at it, make sure to turn on the notification bell to never miss a vlog growing up blue and stay up to date on all things Australian cattle dogs. And be sure to leave me a comment down below. I go through and read all of them and try my best to respond to you guys. So let me know. Does your puppy like bath time? And then also, do you have any tips or tricks of your own as far as grooming and getting them to not attack the brush? Also, if you haven't already watched it, I just posted a milestone video of Rocket at seven months old, which you can check out here. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again very soon. Bye, everyone.